All right, welcome again to Good Choices. So, yeah, it's a late night video. Those are good ones. So let's uh, take a look at what we got here. Okay, so we're starting 102.5. Um, we do need to get through all four topics before I can take the exam. Um, so this is going to be a pretty substantial one. Um, so I guess, I guess it makes sense to set a goal. Let's set a goal to try to get the slider bar. So let's see here. The guided exercise slider bar is right here. So let's try to get the slider bar down here or so to like a major section. So how about um, how about trying to get it down to gathering information about a package? It looks like there's a lot of examples, so it actually won't be that difficult to get through to that. All right, so topic is still Linux installation and package management, and then oops. Okay, so there there was some yellow on my um, focus right that looked weird, so I unplugged one of my cables. Um, so yep, Linux installation and package management, and then the objective is to use RPM and Yub Yum package management. Introduction: A long time ago, in a galaxy far far away. When Linux was still in its infancy, the most common way to oh, you know what? This is this is good news because I did not. Um. Oh, it, it's just it's just starting. Sorry, it's just starting the same way it started in the last one. If we go back and look at lesson one. Uh, yeah, it's it's the same. It's the same sentence. A long time ago, when um, Linux was still in its infancy, the most common way to distribute software was a compressed file, usually as a .tar .gz archive with source code, which you would unpack and compile yourself. However, as the amount and complexity of software grew, the need for a way to distribute pre-compiled software became clear. After all, not everyone had the resources, both in time and computing power, to compile large projects like the Linux server or an X server. Soon, efforts to standardize a way to distribute the software packages grew, and the first package managers were born. These tools made it much easier to install, configure, or remove software from a system. One of those was the RPM package manager and its corresponding tool, RPM. So these are these are um, these are package managers. Um, we learned about. Um, Uh, okay, so we learned about we learned about other package managers. We're gonna learn about two different ones this time. One of those was the RPM package manager and its corresponding tool RPM developed by Red Hat. Today they are widely used not only on Red Hat Linux RHL itself, but also on its descendants like Fedora, CentOS, and Oracle Linux. Other distributions like Open, uh, Suzy, and even other operating systems like IBM's AITX, uh, they also use um, RPM for their package manager. Now, yeah, so these are this is a different packet manager. Other package management tools popular on Red Hat compatible distros. Are Yum, Yellow Dog, Updater Modified, DNF, 
dandified yum and zipper which can streamline many of the aspects of the installation maintenance and removal of packages making package management much easier in this lesson we will learn how to use rpm yum dnf and zipper to obtain install manage and remove software on a linux system now despite using the same package format there are internal differences between distributions so a package made specifically for open suzy might not work on a rhel system and vice versa when searching for packages always check for compatibility and try to find one tailored for your specific distribution if possible all right so the rpm package manager rpm the rpm package manager rpm is the essential tool for managing software packages on red red hat based or derived systems installing upgrading and removing packages the most basic operation is to install a package which can be done with rpm i for install package name where package name is the name of the rpm package you wish to install if there is a previous version of a package on the system you can upgrade to a newest version using the dash uppercase u parameter which would look like this rpm space dash uppercase u space package name if there is no previous version of package name installed then a fresh copy will be installed to avoid this and only upgrade an installed package, use the dash uppercase F option. In both operations, you can add the dash V parameter to get a verbose output. More information is shown during the installation and dash H to get hash signs printed as a visual aid to track installation process. Multiple parameters can be combined into one. So RPM dash I dash V dash H is the same as RPM dash I V H. To remove an installed package, pass the dash E parameter as in a race to RPM, followed by the name of the package you wish to remove. So RPM dash E W get. If an installed package depends on the package being removed, you will get an error message. So RPM dash E unzip. Perfect. Um, so this, this unzip is needed by this installed package. So you can't remove it. Failed, failed dependency. To complete the operation, first you will need to remove the packages that depend on the one you wish to remove. In the example above, file dash roller, mm -hmm. it depends on this unzip. You can pass multiple package names to rpm dash e to remove multiple packages at once. Dealing with dependencies, more often than not, a package may depend on others to work as intended. For example, an image editor may need libraries to open JPEG files, or a utility may need a widget tool like Qt or GTK for its user interface. RPM will check if those dependencies are installed on your system and will fail to install a package if they are not. In this case, RPM will list what is missing. However, it cannot solve dependencies by itself. In the example below, the user tried to install a package for the GIMP image editor, but some dependencies were missing. Right. It is up to the user to find the .rpm packages with the corresponding dependencies and install them. Package managers such as yum, zipper, and dnf have tools that can tell which package provides a specific file. Those will be discussed later in this lesson. All right, so listing installed packages. To get a list of all installed packages on your system, use the RPM-QA. Um, and you can think of 
remember that by thinking query all. Let me take a look at that on my system. Now the thing is with my system is it's not a it's not the same type of system. So I do not think it will have it, but I will confirm my hypothesis here. All right, so the command is rpm-qa. There we go, rpm is not found. Um, it looks like I can install it. It's a different kind of package manager. Um, I'm not gonna install it, I'm just gonna keep on going. So the next section, getting package information. To get information about an installed package, such as its version number, architecture, install date, Packager summary etc. Use RPM with the dash QI. Think of query info parameters followed by the package name. For example, RPM dash QI unzip. To get a list of what files are inside an installed package, use the dash QR, which we can think of as query list, right? Query info. Parameters, oh, Q QI, parameters, th think of query list, followed by the package name. So you can either do QI for query info or Q list for query list. Um, some On some systems, an I and an L look very similar, so be careful that you know which one is being run. If you wish to get information or a file listing from a package that has not been installed yet, just add the dash p parameter to the commands above, followed by the package name of the RPM file, file name, so RPM dash QI package name becomes RPM dash QIP file name, and RPM dash QR file name becomes RPM dash QLP file name as shown below. So here we go, rpm-qip, um, qi is query info, and then p is uh, you are able to get information or file listing from a package that has not been installed yet. Okay, so here's QLP query list. So query info, we can see the name, version, release, query list, we just see a list of files associated with it. All right, so next is finding out which file, which package owns a specific file. To find out which installed package owns a file, use the QF, think query file, followed by the full path to the file. All right, so rpm-qf for query file, full path to the file, and we can see it belongs to this package. In the example below, above the file, slash user, slash bin, slash unzip belongs to this package. All right, so that, that's all about RPM. Um, the next package manager is yum, so I think this is a good place to stop because we're switching to learn about another package manager. Um, so a uh, short video, but um, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching, see you in the next one.